I am an artist from Uganda and also a political leader from Uganda. I am the leader, I'm the opposition leader in Uganda, but I'm not supposed to be the opposition leader. I'm supposed to be the president of the Republic of Uganda. Okay. Yes, I ran uh, in 2021 for the presidency of Uganda, and I believe I won with way beyond 80%, but Uganda is a military dictatorship, and General Sogeni was being in power for 37 years, put me under house arrest, killed a few hundreds of my supporters, uh, rounded up and imprisoned yes, yes, yes. every body of my campaign team, and as we speak, more than half of them are still in prison. However, that's for another day. I'm here to speak as an artist. Um, I'm originally an artist. I'm not originally a politician. And even up to now, I really hesitate to introduce myself as a politician. I'm an artist, and uh, now that we're discussing hip hop, I am not sure if I will straightforward classify my genre as hip hop. However, uh, it has been largely believed that all grassroots music, all ghetto music, all downtrodden music is classified as hip hop. I am a blend of hip hop, of dancehall, of Afrobeat, of circus, and any kind of music. So I am here to discover the name of my genre of music. I started out as an artist, and I, I am one of uh, the most known artists in East Africa, and to some extent in Africa. Initially, I got into music not just to be rich, not just to be known, but because I had something to say. I wanted to represent my community, my, you know, fellow ghetto people, so I ventured into music. And in 2005, I was at the peak of my art. My music was generally about the girls and the money and the party and the weed and the drinks and everything. However, in 2005, like I said, when I was at the peak of my craft, something happened that was to transform my thinking. I was the first artist in Eastern Africa to drive a Cadillac Escalade. <laughs> and the time, the train was spinning wheels. So like I said, because I was at the height of my career, I bought a very big Cadillac Escalade with 24 in spinning wheels. And I parked it on a nightclub outside. But because in the country where we live, it is those that are close to power that have the right to do anything. I was moving and swaggering and feeling like a man. And all girls were looking at me. I was the guy that night. I did not know that one of the young men that was watching me did not like that. So this guy comes to my car, pulls me out and slaps me. I'm a boxer. So I got out of my car to show this guy and teach him a lesson of his life. So he pulled out a pistol and put it on my head and slapped me some more. So I changed the idea from fighting him physically to fighting verbally. I asked man, why are you beating me? What have I done to you? And this is what you ask me. Why are you showing off? Don't you know this country has owners? Slap me some more. And he took the security of the club. Not to save me, but to plead with him. He said, Afandi, Afandi means officer. He said, officer, please forgive him. He did not know that the bosses were here. When I got to the parliament, the story changed. That is when the government took serious notice of myself. And of music. For a long time, we were just entertainers, hired to entertain the bosses, hired to sing praises to the government. But this time, I was in parliament, sent by the common people. The story was just beginning. I was in parliament for two years, and in 2021, there was a presidential election. For so long, the General Seven had always unpicked a candidate, and also they were just the usual politicians that have 
small or no connection to the common people whatsoever. But this time, one of them had showed up. So I decided to run for president because even when I was in parliament, I realized that in a dictatorship, it is only the president that has power. So I ran for president. I gave General Museveni the hardest run for his money. I was in a presidential campaign where I had to campaign with a bulletproof vest and a ballistic helmet. Like I've said already, many of my friends were shot and killed on the 18th and 19th of November 2020. More than 300 people were killed because I was arrested and people protested on the street. With me, I have a brother called uh, Ashraf. Ashraf, come here, please. Kindly of take off this helmet. This brother is a journalist, and he was the cameraman that was moving with me on the car. A soldier aimed a gun at me, and lucky enough, the car where I was hit the pothole and removed. The bullet that was supposed to get me got my brother on the head. Thank goodness he survived. However, we have to sneak him out of the country to get him here. The music that has been used to market derogative words that are used to describe our system. And derogative words like the N word used to describe us. So we can use that art, that hip hop, that music to transform the way we look at ourselves and look at ourselves as kings and queens, as princes and, and, and as prince and princesses. So we can go on and on and on about the music, but I'll say that's the power that we have that we've not even used one percent. We can use it, we should use it, and we will use it. Thank you very much. The voice of the African American is powerful. The hip hop culture we created impacts fashion, entertainment, language, education, politics, dance, and much more. This is why it's important we protect our voice. We protect the message of hip hop culture. We protect our legacy, especially for our youth. I spent um, the last two years in the car synagogue. And I was in a village called Gaywa. They have a hip hop organization called Hip Hop. And there I was able to meet more artists and learn about the hip hop movement that took place in synagogue. The hip hop movement is what protected the po political realm of the democracy in Senegal. When their democracy was challenged, those artists went into the streets and they protested the hip hop, the youth. They protested and they have been able to maintain a peaceful government. They are one of the only countries in West Africa that has not been overthrown by food. But now that is being broken. So even yesterday, as I picked up my phone and I happened to call the village, they told me they were fighting the police. And I said, why? They said, because they're trying to take our land. This is happening today. Our voices are strong. Um, hip hop comes in so many languages now. But we have to remember the root of it comes from us, the African Americans. And at the same time, we were fighting for justice here. Our brothers and sisters on the continent was fighting as well with the words of hip hop. Someone asked me yesterday if I'm an artist, and I said, I don't know, but I have a journey with hip hop. Um, it first started in the streets of Detroit. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. Um, I was originally one of the actors or extras in the 8 Mile. And then from 8 Mile, we started the hip hop in the park in my neighborhood. Today, my neighborhood has been deemed one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Detroit. But I said, guess what? Something good came out of that neighborhood. I did. I came out of my neighborhood. The Hip Hop in the Park started in the Rosedale Park of Detroit. And then from there, we moved it to New York. We took 40 artists from the streets of Detroit, Cleveland, to New York. Before I start speaking, I have not heard anyone, no matter what I've done, Talk about this is the 50 year hip hop anniversary since happy birthday to hip hop. DJ, 
Please help me now. When I look at a collective liberation, a collective liberation is dependent on individual liberation. And when we ignore the individual liberation, we are ignoring the collective liberation. And for my whole life, most places that I've been, we ignore the individual liberation. And let me tell you what I mean. Um, I grew up in an orphanage, I grew up in foster care, I'm not going to go into the sad stories of being abused and molested and watching children, being beat close to death. But to be a child and to ask for help, and there is none. We live in a state where there's so many children that need help and support in this country, and there is None. I don't know if you guys ever heard of adverse child, uh, uh, childhood experiences, but it's a concept that came up, and what they found out is the more adverse childhood experiences you have, the more likely you are to become an addict, the more likely you are to have mental illness, and the more likely you are to end up in prison. When we're looking in our communities and we're looking at adverse childhood experiences, the things that we like to be quiet about, shh. Don't tell nobody. Go to church. You better not say nothing. The event that I have is called Portic Recovery. It's an alcohol free, it's an alcohol drug free event. And what it's designed to do is allow people to come through and bring those traumas to the table. A lot of people don't know that rap is spoken word. Thank you. People don't, people try to distinguish. Uh, try to separate the two, but they're not. And we was in a, uh, a discussion earlier, someone was telling the elders that they should do hip hop. The elders have already been part of hip hop. Look at the, um, the last poet. You just got hearing, right? So they always do. So they always, they're, they're always been there. The collective liberation, we have to support the individual liberation. When we just saw from looking at a video of the individual, the uh, invisible kids, we have millions of black invisible kids right here in the United States of America, right? Go we'll this very quick. If you want to see the bulletin uh, that they have out there, if you have a chance to get one, if you go to the back of the bulletin. Um, this, it talks about the hip-hop declaration of peace. Um, very quickly, you know, as we talk about the different things in hip-hop, we talk about the elders, and we talk about the youth, and we talk about how we want things to be, uh, we have to have ways to unite us. We have to have ways that uh, we don't have to have the personalities and the different influence of the organization. So May 16th, May 16th, 2001, we went to the United Nations and presented a, a document that we call the Hip-Hop Declaration of Peace to establish the hip-hop as an international culture for peace and prosperity. Y'all can clap on that. Y'all can clap on that one. Y'all can clap on that one. The challenges that we're having is that the corporations are never going to do anything that are going to empower Africans around the world. Let me say that again. They will never do anything. Why would they do that when they destroy what they're trying to do? Word? Word? Word. But if we as a culture, as an international culture, can understand this, this document, understand how we can use this document for 30 years. Cameras okay, one, y'all. Cameras okay, one. All the time here, Sarah, that's the first chapter teacher, and it's been at the forefront of teaching about culture beyond entertainment. Back in 1993, uh, when he released his solo album, we turned the boom back, he made a statement, and he said, rap is something you do, hip hop is something you live. Mm -hmm. So 30 years ago, we started talking like this, and I said, you fast forward to 2001, we went to the UN and produced this document. So what we teach is three things mainly principles over personality. Culture over corporation and people over profit. When we when we begin to look at these, uh, this document, the about Declaration of Peace, it is a unified document. I've been to this document around the world for 20 years because there are no organizations that have been to this document.
There are no names that are written in the document. There's uh, principles that are laid down, and it talks about in the, the, uh, the preamble to establish the foundation of health, love, awareness, wealth, peace, and prosperity for ourselves and our children's children forever. If y'all like that, make some noise. Hip hop is so multifaceted that it can influence industry and issues in a myriad of ways. And so that can happen not just through the music, but also through the fashion. That can also happen through the ways in which food is marketed. That, is, that can happen in the way in which we mobilize and organize um, in town halls and through, through lyrics, through poetry, through technology. Like, um, hip hop has the means and the reach to do that. And so we just have to be in, intentional about that.